go, Nietzsche Mami, this is G Secure, and you're watching PokeCast. For our second uh, Robots and Cyborg comics, I'm going to be doing Transformers, um, Volume 9, and this is from the Marvel uh, adaptation from the 1980s. And this is one of those that I definitely had to bring up because, well, who's another one of the ultimate famous robots out there well why not robots in disguise and this is unique because this is actually um, I don't know exactly when this is in the, in the uh, storyline of the Transformers um, so I can't really say when this was happening but definitely have their own um, look into their own version of the series so that was really good Thing it makes uh, this one alone. Basically, we're looking at. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can find her real name. It's funny because right now I actually have Comic Vine pulled up, but we have her by her real name, Circuit Breaker, and so it's always funny when I. Let's see. Josie. Okay. Basically, this is after. I guess this is after the um, after one of the oil rigs were destroyed. I don't think it was the one that Spike and his father was at, but the Decepticons went and actually completely obliterated the place and severely injured um, this intelligent girl who actually works for. Let's see. No, he's not even there. That's always nice when I try to find uh, somebody's name and it's not there. Uh, Mr. Blackrock. Um, basically, she's been paralyzed and Blackrock has designed an actual super weapon that supposedly is going to actually destroy these evil um, uh, methodical uh, robots that are here and the government refuses to acknowledge their existence. Yeah, it's never good when you actually have somebody that builds your weapons willing to expose the government's secrets so you know he's not very happy at all and she of course is not too pleased either now according to the storyline to what I understand of the comics is the the Autobots has been just devastated uh, by the Decepticons and Optimus Prime is still alive but he's been captured, and they actually have uh, decapitated him and taken him into, uh, well, using his matrix. So it's you know it's a pretty dangerous situation that they're in. Um, let's see. Uh, Soundwave is here, and he's defeated Megatron, and they get wind of the about this gun because you know he's been telling everybody I'm gonna do this let's do this I'm gonna show everybody that I am able to destroy these robots and save the world and of course that ticks off a few people unfortunately for him Josie has made an actual armor suit that she's able to use to get it allows her to move fly do anything she really wants with computers and has called herself now Circuit Breaker. Because she wants to prove to uh, uh, Black Rock that she's going to be the only way that he'll be able to do this. And it gets really unique with that because we get to see somebody who is now living by revenge and rage trying to do something good but ends up doing it the wrong way. And you know, if I finally, uh, thanks to Jazz being as sporadic as he is, and just you know being the all-time cool guy, <laughs> kidnaps Blackrock and tries to explain to him, You're like, "Yo, man, what's your problem? There's two of us out there. There's us Autobots who are with you guys, and then there's those Decepticon creeps who just want to destroy everything. You know, if you help us get oil, which we need, we can guarantee you protection, and we can guarantee we're going to take on those Decepticons." And finally, after Blackrock understands this whole thing, he's like, okay, 
Thank you for explaining that. I do apologize that I hated you guys and Decepticons. And then that's when chaos erupts. Starscream comes in, Circuit Breaker starts attacking the Autobots and the Decepticons, and completely makes a fool out of Starscream. I'm going to leave it right there because I want to save the ending for you guys. But it's just, it was so unique to be able to see that a girl who is that smart was able to make some type of suit to where she is able to literally devastate both the Autobots and Decepticons, and she's just a mere human. <laughs> Needless to say, Starscream was not too pleased about this. But of course, Starscream is usually the village idiot or the... Well, yeah, village idiot, since he's the one that always makes us laugh. And ultimately was destroyed and brought back in the later series, so that was uh, one of those nice little things. Um, when it comes to this one... So far out of the other Transformer ones I've read, I have a couple from uh, IDW, and I think I have a Dark Horse one. I really enjoy this series because they keep true to the original 80s um, cartoon series, which is really nice. And, it'll, you know, bring in new characters, like, you know, what if this character actually was in the television series? So that was what was really nice about this. And... Also, another character that they introduced within the comics, of course, was Wiki. You know, he was not just a guy made for the television for the live-action movie. He was actually featured in the comics as well. But I have the uh, definitely do some more reviews for you guys to tell you what's going on later in this as we get back to more robots. So, hope you guys have enjoyed this review. I definitely give this one high marks and recommend this one. Um, again, this is a, from the 80s and one of the more popular series. So good luck finding this one out there. But if you're able to, definitely pick up this series. It's It's been fantastic so far. The good news is that uh, I think in issue 12, I think it is, a little bit later though, we get the Dinobots in there. So we actually get to see some of our favorite bots um, having some fun. So this has been my review on Transformers. Issue 9 from Marvel from the 1980s. Hope you guys have enjoyed.